word for us this morning in Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4 is where we're going today. When you grab that, get to your feet as quickly as you can. Mark chapter 4. And we're going to pick up reading at verse 35. Mark chapter 4. We'll pick up reading at verse 35. To all my expository preaching students, don't judge me. (laughs) Mark chapter 4, picking up at verse 35. It says, on the same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now, when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him, said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? You can have your seats. If you're looking for a title for this message, I got this for you to write down, a superhero for your storm. A superhero for your storm. Uh, back in the late 60s, uh, early 70s, back when black exploitation films had its birth, uh, when these movies became popular and y'all were going down to the dollar theater to see movies like Superfly and Dolomite, Foxy Brown, The Mac, and of course, you can't forget, Return of The Mac. Marvel comic books also got wind that this was a booming franchise and started to create comic books that went along with the black exploitation films that were popping up in theaters across America. They started to create uh, uh, African American superheroes, um, and and there was one in particular. You may not have heard of him then, but surely you have at least heard of him recently because Netflix has uh, rebooted this superhero hero, uh, giving him a resurrection and a reimagination, um, and, and, and giving him a trademark of a, of a hooded sweatshirt riddled with bullet holes. You may recognize the name now because you watched a series called Luke Cage. Luke Cage had its, had its genesis back in the mid uh, six, the late 60s, early 70s, but of course he's been resurrected now. And you know, if you are familiar with Luke Cage, either with the comic book or, or with the show, um, that Luke Cage is bulletproof. He is not afraid to walk into dangerous situations and circumstances uh, because the bullets literally bounce off of him. Uh, Because of this, he is able as a superhero to protect people from flying bullets and falling buildings simply because those circumstances do not affect him the way it affects other people. Uh, he's able, because of, because of his ability to walk through these circumstances, he's able to protect people from circumstances that they would be vulnerable to, but he is not vulnerable to. And all throughout Harlem, if you watch the show, Luke Cage is loved because he is bulletproof. Um, uh, They love him because he is not affected by the circumstances the same way that they are. So he can protect them once again from flying bullets and falling buildings. Y'all, I wouldn't want a hero that's as vulnerable as I am. If you if you're going to be my hero, you can't be affected by my issues the same way that I'm affected uh, by the issues. I, I need a hero um, that's not as concerned about flying bullets and falling buildings as I am. If you're going to protect me, you got to have that type of power. 
That's the type of situation that we have as we approach the text this morning and the, and the disciples find themselves in the middle of a storm. Uh, they, they, they are in the storm. They are panicking because this storm seems so much bigger than them. But most importantly, they are panicking because Jesus is with them. But the Bible says that Jesus is in the stern, asleep, on a pillow. Do you know what kind of sleep that has to be for you to be sleep on a pillow? If you, if you are sleep on a pillow, you went to sleep on purpose. That's a Sunday afternoon sleep. That's, that's an itis after Thanksgiving dinner kind of sleep. That's a, that's, a, that's a drool down the side of your mouth. Jesus went to, look at somebody and say, Jesus went to sleep on purpose. And, and the disciples were under the mistaken impression that Jesus was asleep because he was uninterested. They were under the mistaken impression that Jesus was asleep because he was not focused or, or, or not concerned with what was going on. Jesus, I submit to you, is not disinterested. He's just not affected by the scary situation in the same way that you are. I know you are pulling your hair out. I know that you are going crazy with stress. I know that you are concerned, but Jesus can rest in your storm because Jesus is like Luke Cage. He's simply not affected. He's a superhero for your storm because he's not affected by your storm the same way that you are. So my encouragement to you today, if I can only just say one thing, if you, if you was just about to fall asleep, but you wanted to be able to tell somebody what the message was for today, write this down and you got the whole message. I want, you to, encu I want to encourage you to take heart that Jesus is stronger than your storm. Be encouraged that Jesus is stronger than your storm. Now, I'm going to just spend the rest of the, just a few moments I have left uh, trying to break down uh, the benefits and why Jesus is stronger than your storm. Your superhero is stronger than your storm. First thing, point number one, I want to make sure that you know um, that Jesus is a hero with a plan. He's a hero with a plan. Check it out. Don't miss it. If you, if you read too fast, you might miss it. It's right there in verse 35. Verse 35 says, On the same day when evening had come, he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side. See, you read it too fast. Jesus said before they got into the boat, before the storm started, before any of these circumstances took place, Jesus told them, here's the plan. You and I together are going to make it to the... Now, here's the problem. If Jesus would have told them that there was a storm in between here and the other side, they might not have gotten into the boat and they might have disqualified themselves from the miracle that they would see happen. But Jesus said, sometimes, y'all, Jesus don't tell us everything, but we just got to trust that he has a plan and the plan is simple. Let us go over to the other side. I know you're in the middle of the storm, but please don't forget the plan. Jesus did not send you into this storm to die. Jesus had every intention that they would make it to their destination. But here's what happens. We lose sight of God's plan when we start looking at the problem. And then our problems look bigger than they are because we've lost focus on the plan. If we would keep focus on the plan, then the problem won't look as big as it is because God's plan is always bigger than your problem. Come on in here. I know it's 8 o'clock in the morning, but y'all don't, don't leave me up here by myself. But the disciples run down to the stern of the boat. They, they shake Jesus awake and then they ask him a question. Don't you care? That we finna die? That's not exactly what they said, but you get it. You get it. That's, that's my translation of what they said. They, I love how in the middle of our problems, in the middle of our storm, we, drunk, we jump straight to death. We are perishing. 
No, you're not. You're in a storm. The, the water's getting in a boat. Grab a bucket. You, we, we, we have this, this, this uncanny knack to jump all the way to death, all the way to certain demise. You, you having a rough patch in your marriage. You're like, oh, Lord, I need to fire me, Lord. No, you don't. You need to go and, and, and talk to your spouse. You need to go to counseling. It is not that bad. You are not about to die. You are just in the middle of a storm. And Jesus' plan is that you would make it to the other side. Please don't jump to death. You are not dying. All you got to do is focus on the plan. Don't let the problem get bigger than the plan. How can I give it to you? Oh, 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 um, uh, several years ago while I was still on staff um, here at the church, um, and, and First Lady and I, we live, First Lady uh, Lavera and I, we live um, in, in Southeast D.C. So we, um, we, um, we, we were leaving here um, from, from, this, from, the, uh, from, the main, uh, from the ministry center, and we were on our way down 295, Highway 295, into the city. Um, now, uh, as we were on our way home, there was a huge rainstorm that happened. Um, and it is something about your windshield wipers that you never know or remember that they need to get fixed until it's raining. And that's what happened. That's what happened. I had forgotten that my windshield wipers was tripping um, and, until I was on my way home and it was raining. Now, in this particular time, um, I was leading her back home, but we both know the way home, but I'm leading her. I'm in front. She's in behind. And so, and so my windshield wipers are, are going crazy to the point that the one right in front of the driver's side uh, goes completely off the windshield. I mean, completely off the windshield. And so I put on my hazard lights and I, I pull over, I pull out the phone and I call my wife. I say, baby, um, I, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it home um, because my windshield, I can't see, I can't see a thing. It's pouring out here and my windshield wipers have gone uh, completely off of the windshield. Uh, my wife said back to me, that's your problem. <laughs> your problem is you think you always got to be leading something. I know that your windshield wipers have malfunctioned, but there is nothing wrong with my windshield wipers. So here's what we're gonna do. She had a plan. I'm gonna come around in front of you. And I know that you can't see your way through the storm, but what I want you to do is I want you to keep your eyes on my lights. You can't see your way home, but if you can keep your eyes on my lights, I am not affected by the storm the same way you are affected by the storm. I can see perfectly. You don't have to see through the storm. You just have to see me. When my turn signal comes on, you turn. When my brake lights come on, you brake. When you, when it's, when you feel like we're pulling into the, to, to our home safely, we are there because there is a plan that is bigger than your problem, and you don't have to see your your way as long as I can see come on somebody somebody in here who knows that God can see through this storm better than you can and just because you can't see everything doesn't mean that you can't proceed keep your eyes on his light and if you keep your eyes on his light you can get through this storm because he is not affected by the storm the same way that you are and he is a hero with a plan Jesus is not affected the same way. If, so y'all, if Jesus is chilling, the only thing Jesus stopped short of saying was, hey y'all, grab a pillow. Y'all gonna catch that on your, on your way home. I wish Jesus would have told them off like I would have told them off. I wish Jesus would have said, I did not come through 40 and two generations. I did not come to, to, to earth from heaven to die in a boat. I, my plan is way too big for this storm. Okay, I gotta, I gotta hustle, I gotta hustle because there's, there's something else about your hero that I need you to catch out of this passage. Not only is he a hero with a plan, but he is also a hero with a process. There's a process to this thing. Please don't miss this. Please don't miss this. Y'all shout it on that one. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get y'all to shout on this one, but, but at least I gotta give it to you. It's in verse 39. The Bible says, 
after they asked him, don't you care that we fit in to die? He, he's, this is what happens. He doesn't respond with words. He responds with actions. Verse 39 says, then he arose, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, peace, be still. Here's where I struggled, y'all, if I was reading this this week and studying and praying. Uh, the, the Bible says earlier that the waves were beating into the boat. It says that the water was filling the boat. But verse 39 says that Jesus rebuked the wind. Y'all ain't caught it. The waves were beating against the boat. The water was filling the boat. Jesus rebukes the wind. Half of y'all got it. I got to catch the rest of y'all up. The waves were beating against the boat. The water was filling the boat. But Jesus says nothing to the waves or the water. Jesus rebukes the wind. Why? Because there's a process to this. Because the problem was not the waves or the water. The waves and the water were the symptoms. The problem with the waves and the water was being caused by something that they could not see. The wind. And Jesus, I believe, is teaching us that on the way to your deliverance from your storm, there is a process to this. We want Jesus to come and quickly address the symptoms when Jesus wants to go straight to the root problem and deal with the wind in your lives. Come here, come here, come here, come here. I need y'all to understand that Jesus does not rebuke the symptoms as much as we want Jesus to fix the symptoms. Sometimes we, we struggle in our storms because we won't let Jesus anywhere near our root problems. We want him to rebuke the symptoms. Let, oh, yeah, okay, y'all just added three minutes to this thing, so I gotta explain it. Our boat is our health. The waves are sickness and fatigue, body aches. And we want Jesus to rebuke the waves and the water when the wind is poor food choices, lack of exercise, lack of rest, substance abuse. We got all of these issues and we want Jesus to deal with the symptoms, but we won't let him anywhere near the root cause. I ain't made y'all mad yet. Our, our, our boat is our marriage. And the waves are arguments and lack of peace. And we want Jesus to come and deal with the symptoms. But the root issue, the wind, is selfishness, pride, lust, unforgiveness. Okay, I ain't hit yours yet. For some of us, our boat is our finances. And the waves, the symptoms are low funds, bankruptcy, facing eviction or foreclosure, unpaid bills. And we, when we come to church praying that Jesus would deliver us. But Jesus, I believe, wants to get to the root cause and rebuke the winds of no budget, poor spending habits, consumer debt the refusal to be faithful to the, uh, to the discipline of tithing. And we want Jesus to rebuke and deal with the symptoms when in reality, there are some underlying root causes that we don't want. Oh, this eight o'clock crowd, y'all, y'all, okay. I see, I see. Y'all gonna leave me up here all by myself. Let me see if I can give it to you in a way that don't make you mad. Um, let's see, oh, oh, oh. Um, with all of the medical advances in our country, with all the medical, medical advances in our world, it's appalling, it's shocking to me that there is yet still no cure for the common cold. Think of all the vaccines that you, that you give your kids when they have to go to school. Think of all the things that they have cured or prevented, prevented preventative measures of me measles and chicken pox and everything else that they have prevented for us. But there is still yet no cure for the common cold. Yet, if you go to the Target, there's a whole aisle of all kinds of medicines 
that is supposed to be for the common cold. Here's why there's no cure for the common cold, because there is not a cure, there is only a process. Your body has to take a moment to locate the virus, then it dispatches white blood cells, and then it enacts vitamin C from those blood cells in order to gather around that virus. Then it creates mucus in order to carry that virus out of your body, and then it uh, creates responses, natural responses in your body in order to discharge that mucus. The, pr the process takes about three to five days. And the medicine that you take, because uh, that's, that's what people ask you. If you, if you cough into some hit, they ask you, are you taking anything for that baby? <laughs> if you're from the country, they got all kinds of uh, uh, cures for that they, they want you to do. Take a spoonful of castor oil, it's nasty. <laughs> Y'all, but there is, there is no cure, but there's a multi-billion dollar industry of cold medicine for you. Why? Here's why. Because they know that you don't mind being sick as long as you don't have to deal with the symptoms. You don't mind being sick. You just don't want to deal with the sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy head fever. You don't want to deal with none of that. And so you're okay with being sick as long as somebody can come and mask the symptoms. Y'all, we got a whole bunch of NyQuil Christians. We, we don't mind being sick. We just come to church praying that God would take away the symptoms and Jesus, I believe, is trying to teach us that there's a process to this thing and I want to get to the root issue when you just want me to come and mask the symptoms. <sighs> Look at somebody close to you just because they're mad at me, they don't want to hear from me no more. Look at them and say there's a process to this thing. Tell the person on the other side, the reason you take medicine is because you're impatient with the process. <laughs> Tell the person behind you, the reason you come to church, unfortunately, is that you want Jesus to deal with the symptoms because you're impatient with the... <laughs> and then you came to church four Sundays in a row and nothing changed and you got mad at God. That one for y'all here, that was for somebody watching online. I, I gotta move, I gotta move. Because I gotta tell you more about this hero. There's one last thing I want you to know about this hero before I'm done. I want you to take courage that your hero is stronger than your storm, that Jesus is stronger than your storm. Because he is a hero with a plan. And he's a hero with a process. Don't miss this last one, it's my favorite one. He is a hero with power. He's a hero with power. I love this last part of the passage. Watch what happens. Verse 39, still in verse 39, it says, And he arose, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Okay, I got to tell y'all why that's my favorite part. He, he, he arose, he rebuked the wind, and he said, Peace, be still. The word peace is the Greek, Greek word siopao. It, is the, it means to hush, be quiet. Be still is, is the Greek word pimao. It, it means to be muzzled or restrained. Literally, I, this, okay, here's why this is my favorite part of the passage. Because Jesus speaks to your storm the same way I speak to my kids. Y'all don't get it. Because basically what Jesus is saying to the storm is sit up, shut up. <laughs> Don't judge me. I see you judging me because that's, that's how I talk to my kids sometimes. Uh, Jesus literally is, is exercising his authority, exercising his power over the storm by standing up, meaning taking authority over the storm. He arises and he says, peace. Be, he, no, he says, sit up. Shut up. Let me tell you why, so y'all can stop judging me. Um, so, uh, so, so, ladies, can I can I tell y'all something about us, men? I'm gonna let y'all I'm gonna let y'all in on a secret. God has given us this amazing superpower, this ability, 
that y'all don't understand because God didn't give it to you because of your necessary maternal instinct. God gave us this amazing superpower to completely tune out all noise around us. That's why I'm glad the men's choir was with me this morning, because I, I knew I was going to get an amen from back there. Uh, they, God, God gave it to you. Don't be mad. God, take it up with God. He ain't give it to you. He gave it to us. We have this amazing ability to not hear stuff, even if it's happening like right next to us. And so, and so, and so, my, I, y'all told y'all I got three boys, and my boys like to wrestle. Not wrestle, wrestle. We have to limit their WWE intake because they, they like to wrestle. Um, and, and so uh, there's this time, and so, so I'm, I'm sitting on the couch, I'm watching something on TV, probably ESPN Sports Center or something, I'm, I'm watching television, and my children are literally right next to me wrestling. My wife is upstairs, she hears everything, I hear nothing. And so I'm watching my Michael and Jamel, but they, they wrestling right next to me. And so, and so the first lady yells down the stairs, not to the boys. She yells down to me. And she says, Bobby, <laughs> don't you care that your children are perishing? <laughs> what is going on down? Don't you hear what's going on? Don't you hear Joseph crying? Don't you hear, don't you hear this? And I wake up out of my coma like, huh, what, what was going on, what? And I, only after hearing her concern about what's going on, I stand up and I say to my children, sit down. Y'all not going there with me this morning. Shut up! It is my responsibility then, because I didn't hear it at first, but, but since my wife has brought this petition to me, it is my responsibility to stand up and take my rightful place of authority and tell my children, peace, be still. Now let me make sure that you understand. I'm not telling them to sit down and shut up because they bother me. The issue did not bother me the way that it bothered my wife. But because it bothers her and she has made a petition to me, I have to now stand up because I love her and because I want her to have peace and I want her to be okay. And there's something I'm hoping will happen later on after y'all go to bed. I'm going to stand up and I'm going to say, sit up! Shut up! Not because you are bothering me, but because you are bothering her, and because I love her, I will take authority over you, and I will tell you, peace, be still. I need you to know something about Jesus. He stands up, but he doesn't stand up because the storm is bothering him. He stands up because you have made a petition, then the storm is bothering you. And if you would come to him and just say, Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I can't make it without you. Jesus, I didn't anticipate this storm. Jesus, I know you got a plan. Jesus, I know you got a process. Jesus has the power to stand up and say, peace, be still. Peace, be still. Jesus has authority. He has power over your storm. I've seen many mountains and I've gone through many valleys. Andre Crouch said, but if I didn't have a problem, I wouldn't know that God could solve it. I wouldn't even know how God would get me through. I want to encourage you today that Jesus is stronger than your storm. He is a hero, but he's not just a regular hero. He is a hero with a plan. He is a hero with a process. And he is a hero with power. Lord, thank you for your grace today. Thank you that you love us deeply. 
thank you, that you care for us in our storm and yet at the same time are not affected by our storm the same way that we are. Hey family, if this ministry has been a blessing to you, we would love to know it. Click subscribe, comment below, and hit us up on Facebook and Instagram at go to heights That's G-O, the number two, Heights. I'd love to see you this weekend at the Heights. For info for our campuses and service times, find us online at fbcdh.org. I look forward to seeing you soon. God bless.